Okay, students, can we name each of these substances and identify the charge of their cations and anions? I hope so. Let's take a look at just a few of them. Beginning with this one. We can begin by saying that uh, the element K, potassium, is in column one of the periodic table. Because it's in column one of the periodic table, when it's in an ionic compound, it can only exist as having one charge, which is a plus one. You can't have a potassium plus two or plus three or something ridiculous like that. So the cation charge is obviously going to be plus one. What about the anion? What is the anion in this thing? Well, the anion is SO4. That's one of those polyatomic anions that I've required you, my students, to memorize. The name of that anion is sulfate. So I'm going to go ahead and write down sulfate here. And its charge is negative 2. That ho hopefully makes sense as to why we have to have two potassiums here, each having a plus 1 charge in order to counterbalance the negative 2 charge from the sulfate. So I've got potassium here as a cation. I have sulfate as an anion. So the full name of this is potassium sulfate. And I don't have enough room to write that in one line, so I'm going to put it into two. Normally, I would put it into one line. So potassium sulfate plus one minus two. We're good. Let's go ahead and scroll down through these, and I'll see if I can pick a slightly harder one. Let's look at this one here. I've got Fe, which is iron, and then I've got this NO3 thing. Fe, I'll go ahead and write down iron in uh, its name. Now, iron is not in column one or two of the periodic table. Therefore, it can potentially exist as mo having multiple different charges in different ionic compounds, depending on what the charge is of the anion to which it is bonded. So I'm going to have to put Roman numerals to indicate whatever the charge of this particular iron has to be. How do I figure out what that charge is? Well, I do that by looking at the charge of the anion. So that anion, NO3, is one of the polyatomic anions whose names and charges I've required you to memorize. That anion is called nitrate. Now I'm going to go ahead and write it down here because I'm running out of, or I don't have enough room to do it in one line. But it's iron something nitrate. What is the charge of nitrate? Once again, I've required you, my students, to memorize that nitrate has a charge of negative 1. So the anion over here is a charge of negative 1. You'll notice that there are two of them. Each of those nitrates has a charge of negative 1. And there are two of them, each one stuck to a different side of this iron atom. So I've got iron stuck to two nitrates. Each one has a charge of negative 1, which means that iron must have a charge of plus 2. Because it has to have a positive 2 charge to counterbalance the uh, total negative two charge of two individual nitrates that each have a negative one charge. Okay, hopefully you're okay with that. And because that cation of iron is going to have a plus two charge, in the name I will go ahead and throw down a Roman numeral two. So the final name of this is going to be iron, Roman numeral two, nitrate. Now that distinguishes it from iron three nitrate, for example, because that can totally exist as well. At least potentially you could have iron three nitrate, which you'd have three nitrates bound to that iron, because iron, once again, is one of those elements that is not in column one or two of the periodic table. I'll let you go ahead and tackle the rest of these on your own.